One family got to know they were sleeping on the church ground. Eleven years, nine years, seven years, no school, no, not taking their bath, and I was shocked because I thought that could be my children. And so I quickly went to Makola, found some dresses for them, and boo, and then went to the school around, and then found a bigger member of the church to help them go to school. Well, the teacher rejected these boys and said, no, Usofu, I'm not taking these boys today and tomorrow because they have been here and out, here and out, here and out, and I'm not going to mess up my register. I said, teacher, if you know me, I don't take a note. I said, teacher, I put my life on the line. I will come to the school with the child, the children, the boys, every single day. I will come three times. I bring them to the school every morning. I come during the break time and I come and pick them up to school. If you have a difficulty with the register, let me give you an exercise book. <laughs> Mark them in the exercise book. And if you get messed up, I'll give up. But if you get right, then transfer it. So I was in the process of helping these boys. When I was at the pastor's fellowship and compassion came to speak about the burden to reach children in our city, to my surprise and shock, no pastor had a poor child in their church. <laughs> So I got up and followed the lady who spoke one, I think Miss Thompson or something. And I said, Look, I need help. Gift it, Thompson. I need help. So help me. So we talked, and they said, No, 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 we're not in a crowd, we're in Cape Bush. I said, Why are you in Cape Bush? I said, There are poverty in a crowd. There are rural, urban migration and clusters of you know, people sleeping in kills and all that. So please come. Until one day I had a call and Papa Chum said, we're coming to our church. That's the beginning of the So those boys were the beginning that gripped my heart and then the rest we see is history. Yeah. When you go to that project. Okay, thank you for this opportunity. So on Saturdays, I'm going for projects, for instance, interesting. And then, um, at times, so it's boring because I started with um, my colleagues. Then now when it's Saturday, some of them complain. And they have other programs. And some of them are even not interested in the project again because of um, pressure from the community. Friends. And so on Saturdays, for me, the one thing that has helped me in compassion and then it is my aim to also help others as my brothers and sisters today is the morning devotion. Because um, I received my first Bible when I was six years. Mm. Compassion gave me a full Bible that's the new and the old. So I was really happy. <laughs> and so I got to compassion and compassion sponsored me to attend a um, spiritual union camp so I give my life to Jesus Christ. So now I'm I'm happy. And then therefore I don't ever try to miss money because so I always go there early on Saturdays to help my brothers and sisters there to um, or to lead them in the morning devotion. Wow. Wow. 
that much. I'll stay with you a little bit. Education-wise, um, how has compassion helped in your education? So, um, for my lower primary, compassion paid my school fees. I attended a government school, so we paid PT. And then when I go to form three, they give us test books, accurate test books, and then test size books as well. Then going to SS, compassion gave me provisions, and then test books as well. And then they also organized extra classes. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, I will come back to justice. The Governing Council, partner churches, Reps from the Ministry of Youth and Sports, the staff, alumni, and the media. It is humbling to be asked to address this um, celebration. The Chairman, celebrating 20 years of impactful service in 12 regions out of 16 in the country is is admirable and a source of pride and inspiration. Your loyalty, commitment, and dedication to holistic child development, along with the support of our esteemed guests and partners, have led to this fantastic milestone we celebrate. You have not just impressed upon the children and youth to know Christ and to be agents of change, but you have also transformed their lives with your remarkable achievement shaping a brighter future for our nation. It's not just impressive, it's heartwarming to see your presence throughout the country, partnering with churches and offering financial assistance in child and youth development. Two decades of service is no mean achievement as you have invested in the lives of over 98,000 children, some of whom are studying at a tertiary level in universities and others in vocational institutions. The product is the empowerment unleashed on said beneficiaries as caregivers, releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name, together with the family. Your resilience and dedication in the face of challenges have been genuinely inspiring. We want to take this moment to appreciate and recognize your unwavering commitment in the face of adversity. For this and many others, Compassion International Ghana is highly commended for its human's work in helping individuals with their personal development. Your niche is to see every child protected and loved and ensure that all children in poverty strive towards their God-given potential. This vision of a future where all children can thrive is not just unique. It's a beacon of hope that fills us with optimism and um, a renewed sense of purpose. Mr. Chairman, a Chinese proverb that identifies with the principle of people development says, if you want one year of prosperity, grow a grain. If you want 10 years of prosperity, grow a tree. But if you wish to achieve 100 years of prosperity, grow people. Jesus Jesus chose people and appointed them to bear lasting fruit, as we read from John 15 and 16. Our task, Compassion and Church, is to have more people come to know Jesus Christ. Peter tells us that there are many more children in poverty. When you look at the UNICEF demographic report, which was released the last time um, post-COVID, it tells us that as a result of the COVID, many more children have fallen into extreme poverty. And when you look at it in a multidimensional manner, about 75% of children um, are multidimensionally poor. And so what it means is that there are many more children who need to be reached, who need to be supported to come out of poverty to achieve their God-given potential. So currently we are reaching 
98,000, which is approximately just about 60% of what we believe we should be able to reach by 2030. So this is really extending our capacity and our reach to be able to support many more children, to be able to go to school, have dignified jobs, be able to have sound health, mental health, emotional health, to be able to be economically empowered through technical vocational education and as well as also being able to get into formal jobs. So what are some of the comprehensive strategies? Currently, we partner with the local assemblies. There are many more other organizations as well that we can collaborate with sister organizations who are doing similar work. But part of it is also our ability to reach into very needy areas. So currently we are looking at ways that we can get more into the rural areas. Even within the urban centers, the poor um, uh, slums and, and those in the, in the, in the um, coastal areas where the data tells us that there are a lot of people who are poor and living in those areas. At the end of the day, what we want to see is that every child who comes into this world is able to survive, is able to thrive, and is able to live out their God-given potential. You and I are standing here today because we're one's children who were supported to grow and to become the fulfilled adults that we find ourselves today. So Compassion as a Christ-centered, church-driven and child-focused organization, our vision is that we can see every child really achieving their God-given potential and being fulfilled in life and be able to give back and to transform the very communities and societies they've been part of.